Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. We are very happy to share our uh, research endeavor in assessing uh, aerosol transmission pathways of this virus. Okay, so going back to the beginning of the pandemic, it was a very chaotic time because we had no clear idea how the virus was transmitted from one to the other. And based on the previous knowledge about the flu, uh, transmission. So WHO and the CDC advise that, oh, these are probably by uh, droplets, uh, or they may be uh, transmitted by contact like for my uh, transmission. So in that case, if uh, you can maintain social or physical distancing, or you wash your hands, you should be fine. That was in the beginning of the pandemic. But as an aerosol scientist, I had a question about that because uh, respirators is supposed to be airborne. Face, but let's just wait for one minute. So if you follow the uh, physical distancing and the washing hands, uh, are you protected? Well, apparently there were quite a few cases that told us not really. So one example is uh, in the Skagit County in Washington state. So following a 2.5 hour acquired practice, tended by 61 people, 45 were infected and two people died from that. And they, um, practice the uh, physical distancing and uh, also they wash their hands. So definitely it's something else. So at that time we said, we have to do something. We have to, to do air sampling to prove that it is transmitted in, in the airborne state. So how do you do that? Conventionally, you would use this kind of uh, uh, air samplers and which are filter based uh, to collect these particles on filter then to do the analysis. However, these viruses may get inactivated due to desiccation during sampling. And also uh, the other challenge is the recovery of virus from filter may be an issue for certain filter. So, and if uh, the viruses are not viable anymore, then we cannot really convince the uh, WHO doctors that, oh, uh, the airborne transmission is an important uh, pathway. So how about uh, collecting them in the liquid medium using these type of samplers that can help conserve their viability? That's a good idea from the conservation perspective. But if you look at this uh, figure over here, and uh, you can see the collection efficiency is very, very low. It's a five to 10% for the uh, 100 nanometer particles. And we know that the uh, SARS-CoV-2 variant is about 100 nanometer particle. So we are in a dilemma. How can we efficiently collect the virus aerosols and maintain their viability? That was our challenge. So we developed a device uh, inspired by nature process. Uh, oops. Um, okay, so this happens in uh, our respiratory system. When you have these virus aerosol getting into the uh, human respiratory system, and then, then there will be uh, water vapor condensing onto these uh, particles and making them much larger. So in that case, you will be able to collect them more efficiently. So we actually engineer the same device uh, using this same principle uh, in this device, what, which we call the, the viable virus aerosol sampler. So first you cool the uh, particles into a cold state, and then next you uh, introduce them into a moist environment. You have a lot of water vapor condensing onto these particles making them much larger and at the same time conserve their viability. So you can collect them and do analysis. And this is the uh, photo of our device. Okay, so how good was it? So we first tested it with uh, uh, lab generated H1N1 virus. The x-axis is the, the amount of infectious virus generated during the sampling. And the y-axis is the number of viruses, infected viruses, uh, infectious viruses collected and as you can see, the virus was uh, very close to the one-to-one -one line, which is the ideal situation. Uh, and uh, uh, the biosampler, which is uh, the industrial standard, and was one uh, ma order of magnitude lower. So this test demonstrates the superior performance of the virus compared to the uh, biosampler. Okay, then it was the uh, pandemic time. And so we took our uh, virus into a hospital housing the COVID patient. And uh, at that time, WHO said, you know, this physical distancing, if it's more than two meters, you will be safe. And we wanted to prove that, 
we have to be careful about that. So we place our samplers and this biospot is the commercial version of the virus. So we put the two samplers uh, at a two meter away from the patients and we collect the air samples and we compare <clears throat> with the uh, human, uh, human specimen uh, from the patient and they match. So this demonstrates that the aerosol can be uh, uh, the, a possible route for the uh, transmission of the virus. And furthermore, we inoculate the uh, cells with uh, these uh, air samples. And you can see that uh, after four days, seven days, and 10 days, the cytoplasmic effects of the cells. So they are infected and died because of the infection of the virus in the air sample. And also, uh, as days goes on, you can see the CQ value decrease. That means a higher and a higher concentration in the sample. That tells us that the viruses are growing in the cells. So that means the viruses are viable. So this was the first study to show a viable SARS-CoV-2 in the air greater than two meters away from the COVID patient. And uh, at New York Times reported this is a smoking gun to what uh, WHO and the CDC advises uh, how we can better protect ourselves. We have to consider really the airborne virus, not just the droplets or the fomite transmission. And so this finding provided evidence that helped change of the WHO and CDC guidelines. Okay, but um, the virus transmission doesn't just happen in the hospitals only, especially after there were a good practice of using the uh, personal um, uh, active equipment. So we were thinking, where else does this uh, transmission happen? Where is the hotspot? And our hypothesis was that actually the residential space would be the hotspot because at home, typically you don't wear masks and there is no social distancing. And further, there, there is no constant ventilation to reduce the uh, concentration of the virus. So we did one sampling in a volunteer's house. And this is where the infected individual uh, sits. So this is the isolation bedroom. But we also uh, conducted sample in a bedroom far away from the uh, isolation room, which we call the bedroom two, and in the same household, but the different rooms. And you can see the uh, collection of the samples in the isolation room and the bedroom where the person was supposed not to be there. And we were able to culture the virus in the air sample the, uh, at the isolation room. So this was the first study showing viable virus in air samples outside of the healthcare facilities and on the phone. And this is because of the use of this new tool. And so what we learned from here is that SARS-CoV-2 aerosol can be transported to other room far away in the same building. So that will change how you would deal with how, what kind of advice you would give the two people uh, to better protect them from the exposure. We did some more sampling in the volunteer, uh, in several volunteers' room. And here we have the primary room and the secondary room. Primary room is the self-isolation room where the infected in individuals spend most of the time. And the secondary room is the outside of that room where the infected the individual doesn't really spend too much time, at least according to what they told us. And uh, the, the y-axis is the concentration of the viable virus. And you can see essentially statistically, there is no real significant difference between these two. What does it mean? Well, this tells us that the, uh, you know, the risk in the primary room and the secondary room, it probably is very similar. And so this was the first study showing the air sample in the secondary room and the viable SARS-CoV-2 uh, can be transported to other space in the same building. Again, this is due to the use of the new tool that was developed. So what is the application or implication? Several of them. Uh, the new knowledge uh, that we learned from the sampling tells us that, hey, you got to have a good ventilation when there is someone sick uh, in the residence, right? And uh, there are also other things you should protect yourself, like uh, uh, wearing a mask when there is a co-occupant that is sick, who is sick in the space. And also, very importantly, we demonstrate that you need to use the right air sampler in order to give you the correct information because there have been a lot of study using the conventional air samplers. Then they are not able to capture the virus and they will say, oh, it's fine, it's not really an issue, but that is because of the limitation of the samplers that you used. Okay, now I'm gonna change the topic to a somewhat different direction, uh, which is also part of our project. So the virus was very good in collecting the samples, and, but the analysis take days. 
And very often we would like to have the information, is the virus over there in the space in a short period of time, right? So that's the point of uh, having this point of care detection. We wanted to be able to uh, do the analysis right over there and we will have the answer very quickly. So here we have our, uh, my collaborator has developed this uh, BV device. And this is where you have the uh, samples from the virus. And uh, you don't have to use pipettes uh, in this uh, analysis. You just need to slide uh, this device uh, from one, two, three, four. You can uh, do the lysis of the samples, the RNA, RNA binding and washing. And uh, then the mechanism is like the ballpoint pen. You have this uh, push pen that will release the chemicals and you will do all these things without, again, without using pipettes and everything will be done. Uh, within one hour. And uh, the results shown over here that we were able to detect the SARS-CoV-2 virus or influenza virus right over there within one hour. So you don't have to take the samples back to your lab. Okay, so finally, just the uh, summary. I hope I have demonstrated that we have to use the right tool and water vapor condensation is a very good method to help us amplify the particle size and therefore conserving the viability of the uh, virus for infective analysis. And with this tool, we were able to isolate, collect and isolate from air samples uh, from hospital room, the primary room, and the secondary room, far away from the primary using this uh, device. And uh, so from that, we know that we, you know, the good ventilation and the PPE, they are very important in keeping low risk in the indoor space. And uh, additionally, if we would like to develop the uh, point of care detection capability so we can have rapid risk assessment of exposure to the respiratory viruses right over there. You don't have to take the samples back to your lab for analysis and wait for days. And finally, I would like to uh, uh, acknowledge the financial support from NSF and uh, uh, NIH and also my collaborators and uh, students working on this uh, project. That's all I have and thank you very much for your attention.